Good morning from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. We hope you're enjoying your weekend and we welcome you to Kentucky Newsmakers. In just a few minutes, we'll meet the new president of Moorhead State University. Dr. Jay Morgan is bringing new ideas and new energy to the home of the Eagles. Moorhead President Morgan coming up shortly. But first, Fayette County Health Commissioner Dr. Craig Humbaugh is here. The flu season is hitting early. There's some added urgency to get people vaccinated. Kentucky's drug problems continue to be overwhelming but the health department says a needle exchange is helping them reach some who are trapped in addiction. And then there's another problem dogging the health department right now. The decision to ban dogs from the patio of a new Lexington restaurant called Double Dog in Hamburg. The eatery came to town saying that dogs would be welcome, but the health department has said no. And there's a petition drive that's been unleashed over that. Dr. Humbaugh is joining us. Thanks for coming in, Commissioner. We yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for it. inviting me again. Let's start there. The dog day of summer are over. Now we're having dog days of fall, it sounds like, around here. Uh, why has the health department said no to uh, restaurant patios having uh, dogs? Right, there? yeah. Well, uh, we all appreciate and love our pets, and uh, we also appreciate that uh, most pet owners are very responsible. Um, but, you know, one of our, well, our mission in at the Lexington Fayette County Health Department is to help uh, help Lexingtonians stay well and be well. Uh, and one of the most visible ways we do that is through um, our uh, keeping uh, food and uh, safe and clean uh, for folks in Lexington. And we do that through um, inspections that our environmentalists do. Um, and they follow a federal standard called the Federal Food Code, which is per Kentucky law. And this particular law says that animals, um, with some exceptions, service dogs, uh, police dogs, uh, will not be allowed on the premises of restaurants. And uh, so we've always taken that tack um, and we want to apply the law uniformly. Uh, is it a health risk in your mm -hmm. view to have mm -hmm. pets uh, outside a restaurant? And again, that is the reason for the health code is to, or the federal food code is to um, uh, cut down on and assure safe, uh, safe food uh, for patrons at restaurants. Um, we've talked with uh, the state health department and um, they're looking into and investigating how the food code is being applied or implemented across the state. So we should know more about that in the future. Some have noted that uh, the dogs are outside other restaurants. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. seen them at other locations mm -hmm. in other parts of the state and mm -hmm. in Fayette mm -hmm. County. Uh, why was the enforcement so quick in this case? Mm -hmm. um, again, we have always, we ha in this particular instance, for instance, I should say, we haven't issued any violations or citations to this particular restaurant. So I want to make that clear. Um, and actually in the past, we haven't either, um, especially for dogs that are outside. On the other hand, we want to make it clear that the food code does say um, that dogs and other pets are not allowed on the premises. Okay, so there's a yeah. petition, mm -hmm. they have thousands of names on it mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, likely to change your yeah. inclination? Yeah, and again, I'll go back and say, this is a federal standard and not a city standard, um, but it's a federal standard that's being applied statewide and in many other states as well. So you're yeah, acknowledging yeah, that it yeah. is, uh, you are assessing mm -hmm. things and, mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll, you'll uh, roll with this as it goes. Right, right? exactly. Right. Commissioner, thank you on sure. that. Now, the flu season uh, has hit early. Uh, is that concerning to you? Uh, the flu season normally hits about this time. Uh, maybe this is a little bit um, in advance. We're starting to see a few cases uh, statewide. There haven't really been any um, cases that have been reported to us here in Lexington uh, that are confirmed. Uh, but uh, generally in Kentucky, we see flu from October through May, so that's our flu season here. And uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. you offer the flu shots and mm -hmm. you have a free clinic that mm -hmm. is coming up uh, soon. Tell us about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, so our, our free flu clinic, which is something that we do every year, uh, this year will be October 5th from 4 to 7 p.m. at Russell Cave, uh, at uh, Consolidated Baptist on Russell Cave Road. It's a Thursday. Um, we hope that folks will come out. Uh, getting a flu shot is the best way to prevent getting the flu each year, and, and you need to get an annual flu shot, which means that uh, in order to continue to provide protection 
you have to get one each and every the start of each and every flu season. So this is a great time to do it because we haven't seen a lot of cases yet, as we've just talked about, and it does take uh, 10 days to two weeks um, for the body to develop antibodies to the flu uh, once a flu shot is, is administered. Uh, do you have to be careful that uh, mm -hmm. each year it matches the strain mm -hmm. of flu that is going around? And I know sometimes it's more effective than others, right? right? Um, so, you know, that's what our scientists do nationally, and they look at what the trends are and when they try to predict the types of strains that are coming. So this year, uh, the flu shot, as in past years, most flu shots will contain components that will be against four different strains of the flu, two type A and two type B. Um, so it's a four in one uh, type of a uh, vaccination um, and uh, we're hopeful that it will match the, th the strains that are circulating in Kentucky and North America this year. You've told me that mm -hmm. people are fairly likely mm -hmm. to get flu mm -hmm. shots if they're offered in mass like mm -hmm. you're doing mm -hmm. with this, uh, this clinic. Well, when we polled um, clients last year, about 30% of them told us that they wouldn't have gotten a flu shot if it weren't for the free flu shot clinic. But for those who are not able to make it on that date, um, they can after October second come to our public health clinic at our main campus on 650 Newtown Pike and they can receive uh, a flu shot as a walk-in so they don't have to necessarily have an appointment but I will emphasize on the October 5th date at Consolidated Baptist they will be free for everyone. The price is mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, right. exactly. And they, they might be mm -hmm. getting them from a, a private sure. provider as mm -hmm. well or pharmacy or so forth. All right, the opioid epidemic is uh, unfortunately showing no signs of retreat here in Kentucky. Uh, uh, many would say uh, several alarm mm -hmm. fire, more mm -hmm. than 1,400 overdoses uh, last year. Uh, is this one of our most serious public health issues? Well, I think undeniably it's a public health issue. Uh, unfortunately, we all know um, you know, a friend, a colleague, a family member, a coworker, acquaintance that have substance abuse problems. Um, and it's gotten to that stage where um, it's, it's very prevalent uh, an issue. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that you mentioned that we're trying to do is, um, is our needle exchange program uh, at the Lexington Fayette County Health Department. It operates from 11 to 4.30, again, at our main campus, 650 Newtown Pike, but only on Fridays. Um, and uh, it's been what we, one of my colleagues calls a sad success. It's, uh, we're now seeing probably between um, Oh, around 600 to 800 clients uh, each or visits each month. We're doing eight, 600, 800 visits each month. Now, the primary reason for those, as mm -hmm. I understand it, is to prevent the transmission of uh, other of diseases, mm -hmm. needle to needle, and this sort of thing. But a secondary, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, benefit of this mm -hmm. is that you get that chance to interface with those people. Uh, who are trapped in an addiction yeah. situation, right? I think that's an excellent point. Um, so you're right, the pro from a public health standpoint, the primary reasons are really twofold. One is to um, reduce communicable or infectious diseases that are spread by using dirty needles, by providing clean needles and encouraging clients to use a clean needle. Um, and then secondarily to provide a safe repository to dirty needles to come back to so that they're not um, at risk um, for others, okay? Um, but at the same time, we hope to establish and we feel like we're establishing a relationship with our clients. So if um, they come in on a Friday to exchange needles and that is the day that they want to get clean and then we have a partnership with uh, the city with the substance abuse and violence um, intervention group and they provide counseling and treatment. So I'm proud to say that over 100, through that partnership, over 100 of our clients have um, sought counseling and treatment and they've gotten into treatment, um, which hopefully will benefit them. The big debate, uh, Dr. Humbaugh, about how to go forward on this horrible problem in Kentucky, and that mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, many say we can't jail ourselves mm -hmm. out of this and that people that are being sent to jail uh, for yeah. who are addicted are not mm -hmm. getting treatment. Uh, mm -hmm. How does Kentucky face up to this? 
Yeah. Well, so this is a hard one because we, we want people to be able to get treatment and we want to have enough treatment to be available to refer people to, you know, to those types of things. But in our program, we're trying to meet folks where they are. We're trying to meet the needs of our population. Um, that, and, and hopefully, as you said, we'll build those relationships and we'll be able to move forward. One of the things that we're also, um, planning on starting again is offering naloxone. We did that with a, through a partnership we had with University of Kentucky earlier this year and late last year, and we, through that partnership, had given um, over 900 naloxone kits to, um, to our clients. And I think most of your viewers probably know, but naloxone is um, an agent that reverses opioid overdoses. Opioids are things like morphine, um, heroin, fentanyl, um, oxycontin. Um, so this drug can be given as an antidote, but it's only temporary. Um, if you give it, you have to call 911 because the effects can wear off within the next hour. And these would be given mm -hmm. to whom? So what we did before and what we're planning on doing again is to give it to their, our high-risk clients and their families and friends um, at our needle exchange program. All right. Dr. Umbaugh, thank you for coming by. We appreciate it very much. I enjoy you uh, keeping us updated on yeah. what's going on in uh, public health. Thank you. Thank you. Coming next, the new president of Moorhead State University, Dr. Jay Morgan, will be with us on Kentucky Newsmakers next. Welcome back to WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers. Our next guest this morning is the new president of Moorhead State University. Dr. Jay Morgan is now in charge at the home of the Eagles. He comes to the helmet Moorhead after a long career in education in Kentucky. Morgan was a high school teacher and coach and then a professor and administrator at Murray State University. After that, he had a statewide role as vice president at the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education. What are his priorities at Moorhead State? What role does he see for colleges and universities as Kentucky has been retreating from its financial commitment to public higher ed for the last decade. Dr. Morgan says he's full of ideas and he wants to connect with the campus community and reach out for support as the 14th president of MSU. And we welcome you. It's good to see you, Mr. President. Great to be with you today, Bill. This has to have been a whirlwind first few weeks for you. You have welcomed a new family member. Uh, you're getting adjusted to your new role at uh, Moorhead. How are things going so far? They're going very well. You mentioned the new family member. I can't think of all the things you shouldn't do all in about a three month time. <laughs> Move, uh, change jobs and, and have a new baby. Uh, we, we have uh, two daughters already who we moved from uh, Lexington to Moorhead and then also welcomed our new son Mason who now is about three months old all in the same time. So I, I've got a trooper of a wife. And it all uh, must have felt right for your family. It felt, to make it, this it move. felt exactly right. You know, I've, I've told people with all sincerity that uh, the Moorhead, Rowan County, and East Kentucky community have been so welcoming, not only to me in my official capacity, but also to my wife and family. And that makes me feel very comfortable. You had some uh, major visitors on campus just this week, uh, and uh, they came there, got to t take stock of things. Uh, how did that go? Well, we had a rock star day yesterday, <laughs> Bill. We had, uh, we had the governor of Kentucky, the lieutenant governor of Kentucky, Congressman Hal Rogers, and Probably our, our call out for the day, if you will, was we had the chief administrator of NASA in who spent uh, about a half a day with us. And the administrator was there specifically to talk to our faculty and staff and students and also some community members about our space science program. And as you know, that's a call out for us. That's a branding piece that we use quite frequently. And uh, when the administrator left, he, he said a lot of good things, and, and we hope a lot of good uh, contracts follow. You know, I think very few people realize that uh, overall in Kentucky that the space uh, is a major employer here in Kentucky, uh, the aerospace industry, and there you are training folks at, at Moorhead. Small uh, Moorhead, Kentucky training individuals. We have a couple of small startup companies there within uh, the Moorhead community, and then others who seek our students for the aeronautical and aerospace industries. 
We have individuals who have gone to work for NASA and many points in between. So that's a program of strength, not only for the region, but also for the Commonwealth. I ask you, when you had all these uh, big visitors there, did you spruce things up or did you kind of say, uh, look here, this is what we need to have for <laughs> place to work that's on? Good, that's a good question. We, uh, we, we did spruce it up a little bit. Right. I wanted to leave a door hanging off the hinges just to <laughs> kind of prove a point that maybe we need a little extra. The prove little extra. prove <laughs> you didn't have to use the door for heat that, last that, that, year, that's right? That's right. So we spruced it up a little bit and put our uh, best foot forward, but it was a good day yesterday. Well, it's good to hear. Uh, Moorhead State, one of uh, Kentucky's regional universities, the enrollment uh, has jumped around some over the years. You have said that one of your priorities is to stabilize that. Uh, how do you make that happen? Well, as you know, we, we've had enrollment that has uh, bounced around a little bit. Uh, it looks like this fall semester we'll uh, have a final count of about 10,400 students. That's not a bad count for us. Uh, that's down just a touch, and when I say a touch, I mean just a percent or so. So I would call that stable. We feel like our budget this year is moderately stable. We're looking obviously at the future and what could hold true for higher education and what we may need to do to make some adjustments. What we're doing, uh, Bill, is we're redoubling our efforts uh, on the enrollment side. Uh, in my short time there, we've hired a couple of new folks to get out on the road and shake the tree, if you will, find some new students for us, both in the region, out of the region, and outside of the state. So we feel like that's going to yield some dividends for us going forward. The cost of higher education keeps going up. Uh, parents out there uh, certainly know that. Uh, what do you say to young people who uh, may feel discouraged about yeah. uh, taking on the debt of, uh, that it takes to fund a college education? Well, as you know, a, co a college and university education is expensive, and there's no doubt about it. Whether you uh, have a, an eye on Moorhead State or any other state university, you know that it's going to be a fairly major expenditure for not only the student but uh, their family and caregivers. My one line call out Bill is let us sit down and talk to you about options that we can do to walk you through and whether that is uh, Pell based aid at a federal level, whether it's an institutional scholarship or if we can help you with an alumni scholarship. If we have the ability to sit down with you and talk to you a little bit about what your individual needs are nine times out of ten we can work out something that is very beneficial for you. Moorhead State has about 90 plus percent of our students who get some type of aid. So a very high aid institution and we think that lowers the overall cost of education for folks who decide Moorhead's going to be home for them. What do you say to those prospective students about uh, what the, the potential that a college degree brings to them? Well, your return on investment is so significant. And that's not to say that an individual going into an alternative career path is, is not going to do equally the same or better. But uh, th there's a lot of research out there, Bill, on the, the cost of a uh, higher education, four-year education, or two-year education, and what that lifetime return will be. And there's really no comparison at this point. So not only explaining that to them, but also showing them the pathways that Moorhead State has to offer to get them to their career goals is very powerful for us. And yet, Mr. President, when the times have turned tough, the ax has come at uh, Kentucky's colleges and universities. As you know, our uh, public uh, institutions have been cut about $200 million since uh, 2008 collectively. And even as the economy has improved, the cuts have continued. Uh, what is, what's your measure of that? Well, as you know, we, we've had an escalator, and that escalator's been going down for the past seven or eight mm -hmm. years and instead of going up with respect to higher education funding in the Commonwealth. Moorhead State has taken its equal lump, just like the other state institutions have, and, and it's of a concern. Uh, it, uh, it, it's something that Moorhead has been able to manage its way through. We'll continue to manage our way through, but we have to continue to find ways to be efficient. We have to continue to find ways to lower our cost of uh, overall uh, business, but yet keep that price for the student uh, something that's affordable not only for the region, uh, but also for folks who look at us from out of state. So we'll continually uh, do that on a year-to-year -year basis and, and uh, we'll make the best for what we have. Given that you have had this role in uh, the Council on Post-Secondary Education, you've worked at another regional university, uh, uh, do you think that uh, equips you well to work with other college presidents to be sort of a unified voice for, for higher ed? I, I think so, and that, and that voice can be uh, very, very strong. You know, we all represent different regions within the state, and as a collective measure, the presidents 
uh, marching in tune together can, can offer a lot of insight to the educational needs of the Commonwealth. You mentioned my prior time uh, down at the other MSU at the end of the state. Uh, did serve about 18 years there and left as a provost and senior vice president there at Moore, uh, Murray State. Two MSU sometimes uh, right. get, get them tongue twisted <laughs> there occasionally. Uh, did spend a, a couple of years in what I call a, a combat duty in Frankfurt uh, with the Council on Post-Secondary Education. And I think the two give me a, a, a very good broad-based horizon of, of higher education in the Commonwealth and hopefully one that will position Moorhead State very well. The universities are going to have to earn their public money going forward. There's this performance-based funding that is going to be used. How do you get an entire campus rowing in the same direction so that you can uh, get that money? Well, we've started making that call out. One of the early things that I did in a very early charge from our Board of Regents at Moorhead was to work with our campus in a very collaborative fashion to get them, one, first educated on what performance funding is. You know, you might remember back in the early 90s when CARA came into Kentucky, or CARA was adopted, the SEEK formula for K-12 education was put in place, and there was a lot of consternation in the K-12 uh, world around that. Two, three, four years later, that kind of smoothed out. We're going through that in higher education right now. Uh, the performance funding formula started about two and a half months ago on July 1, uh, 2017, and uh, we're right in the thrust of trying to bend and modify our campus structures. I have started or kick-started on our campus a very nice strategic planning process, so we're almost starting all over in trying to re-envision where we want Moorhead State to be in the next five to eight years. As you know, the governor has a vision, and he has talked recently about universities needing to emphasize programs that are higher paying and in higher demand. Uh, do, you, uh, do you agree with that assessment? Well, I think the governor is looking at the workforce and the, and the economy in the state of Kentucky and what his vision is to, to get more jobs and more companies to locate here. We very much want to be a, a, a part of the state's vision, if you will. And uh, we've talked earlier today and a little bit uh, of a mention earlier about our space science program. We have a very large engineering technology program. So we offer a lot of the programs that the governor is, has made call outs on that are special need, particularly in the Eastern Kentucky region. We also want to be a, an institution that is very grounded in a broad-based education. So our opinion going forward is a healthy mix of all of them a well-rounded individual, but yet an individual that has the skills to get a job. We're with the new president of the Moorhead State University. We're talking with Dr. Jay Morgan and our final minutes with him on Kentucky Newsmakers in just a moment. Welcome back, and it's great to have you here on WKYT as we continue Kentucky Newsmakers and we continue to visit with the new president of Moorhead State University, Dr. Jay Morgan. He's held lots of titles uh, before, but this first time you're called Mr. President. How does that feel? First time to be called president. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, even though I carry the presidential title uh, at work, Bill, when I go home, it doesn't mean much. That's right. <laughs> uh, the kids still call me dad, and they still demand me to uh, make them pancake on Saturday and do other things. That that they want to do. So. You were talking about that campus being uh, nestled over there in the, in the Daniel Boone National Forest, a beautiful area, and uh, as I understand it, you're also emphasizing town and gown relations, that the, the, the town, the city of Moorhead, and the MSU certainly can strengthen uh, together and, and work forward together. That's correct. I, I've told our folks in the area the town and gown relationship and then also the university and regional relationship is very poured, important. A rising tide lifts all boats, and, and I've told our judges and mayors and school superintendents all throughout the eastern Kentucky region, we want to be at the table with you, and we want to hold hands and march forward together. Moorhead has a, a storied athletic history. Athletics can be an important marketing tool. It can also be very expensive to run those programs. Are you assessing uh, the uh, sports programs going forward? We are, Bill. We're looking at all of our programs academically and, and non-academically. And as you know, we've got a very nice athletic program at Moorhead State. Uh, we've got a couple of new and young, uh, excited, very energized coaches, particularly in our basketball program. Uh, our basketball coach is uh, uh, 29 or 30 years old, and the joke around campus is we, we've got a young president, a young basketball coach, what's next? <laughs> so it seems like there's a youthful rejuvenation at, at Moorhead and uh, across the pendulum. We are looking at our athletic programs, and 
we have about 16 to 18 different programs all nestled around meeting certain Title IX things that we need to meet. I commonly say to our folks, our, our athletes are some of our best students. Uh, some of our minor sports uh, boast the best GPAs on campus. Even some of our major sports carry good GPAs. So it's very much a recruiting piece for us and we want to make sure we strike the right balance. So my call out for athletics is we've got to have a balance. Uh, lots of uh, ball games to come and rivalries with some of those uh, schools, but you always want those to be uh, to be good, friendly uh, rivalries and maybe some partnerships with those uh, other universities, right? From time well, we, to time. we do like rivalry, and even though it's a friendly <laughs> rivalry, we, we'll go down the road uh, to various schools, both in and out of the state, and, and try to rough them up a little bit in the <laughs> fall and uh, play a little round ball in the spring and do other things. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all in this together in Kentucky, and we're educating students. Uh, for a, a future workforce, a future economy for the state. And uh, we love to sit on the athletic sidelines and rant and cheer, but at the end of the day, it's about student success. What has been the, the best discovery you have made uh, since uh, being at Moorhead State University? You know, I, the, the call out I would make, Bill, is our people. And I've really bragged on our people. We have such a core of faculty, staff, and students at Moorhead that, that I don't think rivals any, uh, nothing rivals. I've spent a lot of time in the state of Kentucky and there's a lot of good folks in the Commonwealth, but I haven't found a better group than I have in East Kentucky. So our people, uh, what, uh, our people uh, are our call out. Thank you, sir, for coming. We appreciate it very much. Thank and, you. I uh, hope you'll uh, be back from time to time and update us on what's going on there at the home of the Eagles. Be glad to. All right. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Kentucky Newsmakers from WKYT. I'll see you bright and early this week on WKYT This Morning. We start at 430 and we hope you make it a good week ahead.